you're like most of us entrepreneurs, increasing your profitability is always on your mind. And you're probably looking for ways to increase your revenue while growing your company as well. Well, you found a podcast that shares ideas to help you do just that. I'm Marcia Reiner. I'm a business growth strategist. I've helped tons of small business owners to establish and implement a tangible plan that guarantees increased profitability, guides your growth, and plans for a future exit. Because building a highly profitable and sale-ready business creates a win-win scenario. That's more money now and a windfall later when it's time to let go. And I like to share my strategies that I've learned uh, with you on today's Profit with a Plan podcast. But before we get started, I have some exciting news. I've just launched a super powerful training called the 30-Day Profit Booster, where I will show you how you can create a 45% bump in your net profits in just 30 days. Just by following a simple three-step method that doesn't require that you're chasing more customers, this quick and easy profit-boosting strategy can be done without spending more on marketing, hiring additional staff, or working longer hours. Go check it out at 30dayprofitbooster.com for more information. All right. We have a treat today. We have a professional treat today. So I'm excited to have my guest on, uh, Josh Fitch. Josh is the co-founder of Troxel Fitch LLC, founded by Josh and his best friend, Nick Troxel. In 2017, Troxel Fish LLC, I can't get my mouth to work today, is a multifaceted law firm built to support today's business owners and entrepreneurs. The founder's friendship began while in law school at the University of Boulder, uh, and bound by their entrepreneurial spirits and legal knowledge, they launched Troxel Fish LLC shortly after graduation. With this vision to build a better law firm in mind. Josh uses his experience, education, and passion to take clients to the top. Josh takes pride in serving his clients' needs, starting with the business formation and continuing through their business growth and providing support beyond. Troxel Fitch uh, strives to provide a high quality and affordable legal services to entrepreneurs in all walks of life, from venture back CEOs to backyard bootstrappers. Yay! Welcome, Josh, to Profit with a Plan podcast. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So um, first of all, you gave us a little history um, in your introduction about how you and your partner started up. But what was really attractive to you about law? So it was it was entrepreneurship that was attractive to me. And law is kind of how I found my way into entrepreneurship. Um, I had always really wanted to be an entrepreneur and, and not having your my Eureka moment before the end of undergrad, figured, well, I'll go to law school. I'll, I'll learn all the rules to business. I'll figure out how all this really works behind the scenes. And hopefully at that point, the Eureka moment will strike and I'll be off and running with my next billion dollar idea. Um, but that it wouldn't really happen that way. But over the course of law school, I realized that um, a law degree gives you an opportunity to be entrepreneurial in running your own law practice in that you already have an opportunity to sell services that will always be in demand in the form of legal services. All you really have to do is figure out how you're going to build a business to deliver those services to the market. And in doing so, it's, it's kind of like entrepreneurship light. Um, and I realized that I really had a taste for that. And it allowed me to combine uh, what I wanted to do in entrepreneurship with the skills that I had developed through law school. Love it. You know, so many, so many business owners have, have had some sort of a, a, a talent or skill set, and then they mistakenly wrap the business around it. You went around it the other way, and you were you were crafting in a way that you could be a business owner and use the skills that you have. So I love that you did that. Um, so now 2017, that's not a long time, but it is a long time because we've gone through some really crazy environments um, from, you know, kind of a recessionary kind of period. Now we had the COVID craziness, we had a market upswing. Where have you found areas for business owners to succeed and protect themselves on the legal side? So I think there's two different, there's two main areas, at least in small business that we see legal as kind of being an asset. And one is in kind of loss prevention and risk protection, you know, keeping you from making a mistake. Um, mm -hmm. And the other one is in kind of taking legal and going on the offensive in the ability to have more tactical and strategic leverage in certain situations and transactions 
so that you can enter into what may be a light, a slightly riskier area than you might normally practice, but have legal tools and mechanisms at your disposal to protect against that additional risk. Um, and of course, you know, across the kind of business and economic cycles that we've seen from, um, you know, COVID to, to potentially boom times with the stock market to now a, a looming recession, businesses need for that, you know, risk protection versus kind of legal offensive strategy has floated back and forth depending on the economic outlook. Um, I think in, in good economic times, people are less worried about risk because everybody's making money and that's mm -hmm. when they just don't want to make a mistake. Um, vice versa, as we're moving now more towards what is potentially a recessionary times, people aren't, you know, people are kind of battening down the hatches a little bit. They're not foraying into as risky areas and they're trying to preserve everything they currently have and not create any loss through, through easy to avoid mistakes. So we're, our advice is kind of blending across that whole spectrum, depending on the unique business and its point in its life cycle and the economic cycles that we're seeing. Wow, you know, that's really important. I think we all we all want an upside, but most business owners think, oh, I only need the attorney when there's trouble coming, right? Or I've gotten in trouble or something has happened. But I've always been a fan of making and building relationship with your attorney, your banker, your accountant when you don't need them. So that way they're already aware of what's going on in your business and they can foresee any challenges but the relationship's there and you're not shopping in a panic, I guess, would be would be the great thing. So so how does right. one start to develop that relationship with an attorney when they don't necessarily need them yet? So I think the first thing is to to analyze what you do need. You know, are you needing an occasional contract review or one or two forms put together? Or do you need someone who's a true outside or maybe inside general counsel that's running the entire legal arm of your business? So I think step one is to figure out, you know, what is your legal need? What level of expertise do you require? What level of kind of output are you going to need? And then begin to make a relationship. I think a legal relationship is a working relationship and it requires trust and in an interactive process. So no attorney is going to be upset at a proactive client who's reaching out to make a preemptive relationship because that's someone who, when the time is right, is going to be a phenomenal client. You know, there's yeah. someone who's thinking ahead. There's someone who's willing to spend for professional expertise they lack. And that's someone who you want to work with. So even if you reach out to probe attorneys before your need, that's usually going to be well received. And that's when you can begin to figure out where's the personality fit. Um, because as it is that collaborative working relationship, there needs to be a good working dynamic. So once you've now figured out what type of attorney you need and you found the personality fit, then it's easy to be basically engage on your own time frame and get the help you need so that when you do have a small issue as everyone believes their issue to be, you can actually <laughs> receive help. Um, and I like to think about it like, you would never just walk into a caterer and say, I need to throw a party for 50 tonight. Um, right. that's, that's way <clears throat> too much. It's the same with coming to an attorney. If you come to an attorney when you're already getting sued and at least it's not a, a litigation attorney, or when you know the stuff has already hit the fan, it's too late. Um, and similarly, if we already have a relationship, you know, then I'm that caterer that's working with you. Yes, I can come bring over one more dish if we need a dish, or we're missing a couple candles. I can do that. But if you come to me same day and you say you need a 50 person event and you need a few candles, I'm just going to tell you to leave. I can't do any of it. Um, so that's why it's so important to have that relationship built on the forefront, so that one, I can prevent the problems from happening. It's there's never been more accurate than in legal when they say, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It is so expensive <laughs> to fix something that's fallen apart. It's pretty easy to just make sure it doesn't fall apart in the first place. Um, so on the one well hand, said. we can do a better job of preventing harm on the forefront. And then when you call me and say something has gone wrong, I know who you are. I know what your business is. I know what you're trying to do. I probably know of the deal that went wrong and the general specifics. So I can help you and be Johnny on the spot there you know, either with right off the top of my head, or let me look at your contract really quick. I've got it on my computer already. Let me pull it up. As opposed to, I'm sorry, who are you and what are you talking about? And so it's just a totally different, completely different world in terms of what I can do to help if I already know you than if we're trying to be introduced while the fire is already blazing. Well said. And so important to have people like you on the team, right? Uh, I have a friend that is a fantastic criminal defense attorney. I hope never to use him, never ever, 
but I always know where his number, right? Just in case. And it's, it's that kind of relationship that I think, you know, you've addressed points that are really important for business owners to realize that I can do it at a fraction of the cost and time if you give me a little time to prepare for it and I know who you are and we've we've tried to shore up the leaks before anything horrible has happened rather than, like you said, just rushing in going, the cops are at my door and I don't know what I'm doing, right? In, in, in theory. Um, so right. I think that that's, I think that that's really great. But some of the things that, that business owners think to themselves, at least in this small space is a, it's going to be ridiculously expensive. B, I don't really need that stuff yet, but in reality, it can be not expensive and you probably do need those items. Right? So what would be some of the areas that a new business owner or a, um, a blooming business owner would want to come to a general counsel like yourself? Sure. Um, I think anytime you start to realize as a business owner that your best talents are being distracted by trying to learn legal, it's time <laughs> to start thinking about that because now you're not doing your own job and you're trying to do a job you're unqualified for in being your own company's attorney, which you're not going to do well and that's going to erode your ability to do the job that you're supposed to do well. Um, so I think, and, and something to keep in mind is any attorney that works with startups or works with small businesses is going to be okay with the question, hey, what's a ballpark estimate for what this project will cost? Um, you know, Because a lot of things are hourly and there's a lot of contingencies on how involved or not a project is, I'm probably not going to be able to give you a quote down to the, to the exact dollar or cents. But I can at least give you a ballpark that's going to allow you to budget oh, this is a $2,000 project, not a $10,000 project. And maybe it'll be 2,500, but now you at least can bu begin to budget. You can create some buffer. And it's not this just scary looming project that you have no idea how much it's going to cost. You know, we can begin to roadmap. How long is it going to take? What's it going to cost? What is it going to buy you in terms of protection? And what opportunities will you be able to pursue with that protection? And then allow you to stay focused kind of on what you're supposed to be doing. And we can prevent a lot of problems that you may not see as you're looking up towards how things are going to succeed that we are aware of from our experience of dealing with a lot of clients or, or issues when they don't succeed. Um, right. And we can help you actually stay focused upwards towards success because we're preventing the things um, from happening when you don't look down. Um, and a lot right. of those things, for example, are partner disputes. You know, when, when two people or more enter a business partnership, everyone's hoping to get rich and everyone loves each other. But if you don't have good contracts and that takes a turn for the worst, how are you going to keep your company together when 20 or 25% just walks away? You know, now you have dead weight loss, you have no way to get it back. And if you want to run a company where you're allowed to profit from the work you do and, and not just siphon it off to your long gone partners, you have to scrap that whole business and you have to start over. So if we want to avoid having to do that, you know, that's where I could help with something along the lines of, hey, let's just make sure this partner relationship is well defined. Um, you know, it's not rocket science, it's not reinventing the wheel, but it's a detailed step that often gets overlooked, unfortunately, you know, in often with large consequences. Yeah, it's so true. You know, um, we do we do have a relationship when we start our company, right? And we're in love. It's like the marriage and the honeymoon phase. Oh, I love you. This is great. But you know what, having an expert like you to be able to go in and go, well, you might want to have a contingency plan if this were to occur, if that were to occur. And here in California, where I am, I mean, employee relations are, you know, crazy and, and difficult and open to a lot of risk. And so if you are in California, you want to have those kind of relationships buttoned down before you, uh, before you enter into them. So that way you can prepare. Um, I love that that the people are super important that you can protect from. But what about the contracts and the relationships, whether you're hiring someone or a vendor or making a big purchase? Those are really important to have reviewed as well, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, there is, on the one hand, there is there are contracts that are written in what seems to be plain English, but sometimes there are magic words. Like for anyone that's familiar with contracts or any IP assignments, you would know that the words work made for hire may seem simple to an ordinary person, but those are actually really powerful magic words in a contract. Or on the flip side, if you see the word liquidated damages, that might just seem like 
scary or fancy legalese, when in reality, those two words should be terrifying. Um, <laughs> that is a big, big deal if you see the words liquidated damages, either for you or against you, but you should know that's a big deal. Um, so in things like contracts, that's where we can not only help to spot the magic words that we may not understand, we can identify the magic words that the people across the table may not understand. And maybe those magic words benefit us now because we're the ones getting to use the magic words. Um, mm -hmm. So it's important to have a review of your contracts because one, we can help you understand what's in them and what isn't, what might be missing and what we could add in terms of value by in including in them. And it's important to realize that you know a good quality legal contract um, as, as with all kind of preemptive legal work is like a life vest. Um, if you don't need it, it doesn't matter whether it's terrible or great. You're never going to need it. But when you do need it, it doesn't, you need it to be good. Um, so for a lot of clients I see, they're like, oh, I'll just get my own contract or I'll write it myself. That's Zoom. like having, you know, a toilet yeah. seat is a life vest. It's, you're <laughs> never going to pay the price if you never, if your boat never sinks, if you never need it. But the moment you hit the water, you're really going to wish you invested in something quality. And that's the okay. way legal work is, you know, it's, it's very difficult when clients will come to me and say, Hey, Josh, I, I put this contract together myself. You know, the other person told me this and I believe them and I wanted to think they were a good guy, but this and that happened. And it's not always malice. Sometimes someone's life situation just happens, but now you're getting the short end of the stick. How can you help me? And I have to tell you that I can't, like, I cannot mm -hmm. enforce rights that you do not have. Um, so part of what I do is first get you rights and then help you enforce them. But if you decided to take this part on your own and you didn't get the rights, I can't whip them out of thin air and I can't make them for you. <laughs> the only way you can try to even assert them is in litigation. And now we're looking at huge expense, huge delay, huge time, huge headache, all the things that we would try to avoid if we had the initial conversation before things hit the fan. You know, that's, that's really a, a, an important point that we should all look at because there are advantages to every contract. And I think you said in the beginning to kind of be on the offensive side of an agreement. Agreements are meant to be relatively fair, but you can be 51, 49% if you had it structured properly. And, you know, if you're, if you're writing the contract, it should always be a little bit to your advantage or at least have your, uh, your, your back end covered, you know, should anything come off with. Um, but I think we do. I think we just, with all the internet, right, you can go on to legal zoom or you can go to someplace and print down some contract that you think is good. And it's like, Ooh, I just saved myself a thousand dollars. And in fact, you probably just cost yourself, you know, multiple hundreds of thousands if that went wrong. So having yes. those agreements is, is super important. And, you know, like you said, it's not my job. My job is doing what I do and only what I should do, right? Or only right. what I can do. I shouldn't be playing legal, legal professional. I mean, you spent years and years and years learning how to do that. Um, why not, right. you know, why not go that path? So, And I think so it's important are... to recognize, I'm sorry, just last point. I think it's important to recognize that everything that's going on isn't going on in the contract. There is leverage that's being exerted either for you or against you that might not be in the contract. It's say something as simple as attorney's fees provisions. You are not granted attorney's fees for winning a lawsuit unless you put those in contract. Mm -hmm. So let's say you get, let's say I were to get into a lawsuit with Google, knowing nothing else, who's going to win? Google, they're going to crush me with their wealth. So <laughs> if you're dealing with a party that has more wealth than you, does it even matter what's in the contract? If you can't afford to fight them, they can no. crush you. But then we can just throw in one line like attorney's fees. And now we've we've equalized that leverage because if you win, they're paying your lawyers and their own. So now you actually have the tools to fight a Google or you have to fight a bit larger party. But if you don't realize it, some of those things need to be there. You're going to lose. And it's not because of the contract or not or what's in the contract at all. It's because the leverage that you don't see, the power dynamics ah. that you're not aware of, that I can help advise you of that are going to crush you. That's amazing. So with those kind of agreements, do you find that the other side can catch them and they want to stop that? I mean, because I presented um, what I thought were contracts that, that my previous attorney wrote for me. And then I have people that want to line item everything in there. And, um, you know, do, is there a lot of back and forth when you deliver a contract that has those kind of provisions in it? This, I would say there is maybe back and forth one round, but I, at least as far as I operate, 
I am not. I am not basically drafting contracts or negotiating them just to get a theoretical win on my personal scoreboard at my client's expense. I'm always trying to link what I'm doing and what my efforts are to like an actual positive benefit for a client. So a good example is like, let's say we sign an agreement that says, you know, you're paying me for services and you'll pay me reasonably promptly. Well, like I have bills that are due. What does reasonably promptly mean? If I say it means seven days and you say it means 30 days, but you have a bigger wallet than me, how am I going to insist that it's seven when you can just say, it's 30, I say so, and if you want to sue it out, my lawyers will crush you. It just became 30. Like, reasonably promptly, just became 30. Um, and that's strictly because you have more power than me. So what we can do in contract is say, hey, I need you know an attorney's fees provision because I need to cancel out your, your significant leverage. Or I needed to say seven days instead of reasonably promptly because I don't have the power to sue you and enforce that. And any other good attorney on the other side of the table is going to say, you know what, Josh, that makes sense. And, you know, my client's not trying to screw you. Seven days is just as good as 30 for us. So we'll make it seven. But sometimes all clarity. that value there, yes, all that value there is just in the clarity in that I'm preventing my client from having to argue with a bigger dog about what something means. <laughs> love the visuals there i can just see the, the teeth and the fangs and the and the drool coming out with with that kind of situation and that's a place you never want to be in so so a little bit of of um preemptive you know care up front could save you a lot going out the other uh, on the back end if anything were to go wrong so this Absolutely. is this is really good and valuable stuff. So I was going to ask, um, what kind of contracts or what kind of um, documents do you often draft for for clients? Sure. So we can draft a, a wide variety of documents, ranging everywhere from kind of the birth to the exit of a business life cycle. Um, I would say the ones that we're drafting most frequently are operating agreements. So uh, mm -hmm. operating agreement is the official term for a partnership agreement of an LLC or your shareholders agreement, but basically I would say they fall into kind of a few big buckets. Like one is inter-owner relations. Um, another is kind of commercial contracts. So you're getting a website from a web developer or a large order of inventory from a manufacturer. So kind of operational business agreements. We have intellectual property agreements where we're either agreeing to share intellectual property or we're purchasing it or selling it. And then kind of transactions in stock. So deals between an owner and a non-owner um, to bring someone into the company or buy someone out of the company. Um, those type of stock transactions are all things that we work on. And then there's, you know, kind of plenty of things sprinkled that some, you know, don't fit in the bucket or fit in multiple like employee agreements, um, things along those lines or, or, you know, technology license agreements. There's, there's just a ton. But basically, if it's not something directly related to litigation, there's a chance that we can draft it. Awesome. Awesome. And many of those you may not realize you need um, business owners, but you should at least have someone on your team that you could say, hey, this is what I do, you know, and I want to make sure that my I's are dotted and my T's are crossed and, and my back end's covered. What should I have? And then I think that's the real importance of having that early relationship with a general counsel that can come in and go, hey, you know, you're doing a lot of this. You might want to consider, right? And I would advise you not to do that because you're opening the door for all these other problems if you did do that. And I think that's the value I see in having legal, a legal team, a legal partner um, that is helping me do better in my business so I can protect what I've got, keep my assets, keep my personal assets, everything in play. So, well, yeah, um, you are our favorite type of client. Absolutely. And I, you know, I just want to <laughs> echo and I couldn't agree more. It is just even 10 minutes on the phone, which we're not even going to charge you for to say, hey, you know, if this is your business stage, you know, these are the next three things on your horizon. This is the estimated cost. So just as you're budgeting, this is what we should look out in towards the future, even if you're not ready for any of them yet. And then I'll say, if you hear this word, your ear should prick up. That means we're at risk. <laughs> you know, if you hear this word, your, your, your eye should sparkle because we have an opportunity here. And we can road, even if you're not ready for the project or the expense yet, we can roadmap for you. Hey, these are the three most urgent concerns. These are the remedies we use to address them. And just if any of this ever hits your radar, 
call me or that that means something big is on the horizon or on the precipice of happening and we should discuss again so i'll give you some magic words you know if that happens your ears should perk up we should talk you know that sounds too good to be true is that a common practice along attorneys or is that something special that you guys do I'm, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, in the startup space, I would hope it is more common than I would suspect it is because at the end of the day, I'm never going to get rich or, or make my career by taking the first hundred bucks off a million startups that never succeed. You know, my interest is making relationships with companies that will grow into wonderful, you know, bill paying recurring clients. But the only way I do so is by giving them the critical advice they need when they're that seedling stage and developing that relationship of trust in a good working relationship such that, you know, I will be taken care of once the business has succeeded and has the ability to pay me. Um, but I didn't get into this game just to try to extract money out of startups. I myself did it because I, you know, I respect and I admire entrepreneurs. I like entrepreneurship. And ultimately what I am doing in my own law firm is what many entrepreneurs are doing is pursuing a life of freedom and autonomy. I want to run my life how I want. And that's why most people start their own companies. And it would feel like a deep betrayal for me to take advantage of or undercut someone on the same mission as I am, who is kind of simpatico um, in the way we think and feel about making a living. So for that reason, I'm, I'm you know, always willing to give people free 15 minutes if they want to kick the tires with the firm. Or if there's a way I can tell someone, hey, look, you know, taking off my lawyer hat, just putting on my friendly fellow entrepreneur in Colorado hat. Like you don't need me. Like if your fingers happen to fall here on Google and you happen to look at the third link, then like maybe that would happen to be what you need right now. Um, so within the bounds of you know my ethical obligations and and not taking too much risk giving free legal advice, I'm always going to look out to try to you know give people the hand or or the boost that they need if I have that knowledge available. Sure. You know, why not? And and that's fantastic because you know what we're. We're doing so much with, with our business and our life and trying to get this, birth this baby and turn it into the big company that we wanted to or turn it into the, just the company we wanted to. And we need to have that legal protection on our deck and, and have that relationship because like you've said so many times, that's not our jam, right? We don't know what to, we don't know what we don't know and that could get us in trouble. And it's always better to be on the offensive side than the defensive side. And, and protect that business while we can, you know, just for pure money savings and, mm -hmm. and risk offset, you know, to transfer that over. So I love that. So not to mention peace of mind, you know, oh, right? are stressed enough, right? not to mention just uh, the ability to go to sleep at night and think I'm pretty sure I'm covered. Right. Because, you know, I was just talking to another client that, that has a, um, has a situation and we were talking about, and I said, well, when, when you know, did you put that into your, your board meeting minutes? And they're like board meeting minutes. And I'm like, yeah, like every quarter you should have a board meeting and make m make notes of what you approved, what you did last quarter, what you plan to do this quarter, just so you're keeping the corporation intact, right? Mm -hmm. And alive. And he was like, oh, and I'm like, oh no, what, you know, come on. Um, these kind of things, we need to cover our butts. We need to protect ourselves because our family's livelihood is at risk because we opened a business. And the best way I can say to do it is protect it protect it properly with the right corporate structure and having the right professional legal team on your side and saying, Hey, here's a chance. Let's, let's, let's put out the, let's put out the fire before it turns into a flame, right. Or put out the flame before it turns into a fire and get that, get that kind of peace and control. And that to me is what you just said is like, oh, I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. I've managed the risk. So you make fantastic. it sound even better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, um, experience, um, not too much on the bad side, but just knowledge is our best friend. And if we can prepare and we know what we're going to, you know, what bumps are in the road ahead of us, like through someone like you, then, then we can either go around them or go over them gently. Mm -hmm. it, just, it just makes perfect sense to me. And I hope listeners are, are catching the same idea that it makes perfect sense to hire someone like you to come in and help prepare their business so they don't get in trouble. Yep. It's, they say what you don't know won't hurt you. And that's the worst advice ever. <laughs> what you don't know is exactly what hurts you. 
Exactly. That's crazy. All right, Josh. So you've given us some really valuable information and I know you've got so much more that you can provide. Where can listeners find out more about you? Sure. Um, listeners are welcome to go to our website, troxelfitchlaw.com. Um, they can find me on LinkedIn um, and just find my LinkedIn profile, Joshua Fitch, um, or, you know, reach out via email, josh.fitch at troxelfitchlaw.com. Um, always happy to help, whether it's someone just writing a business plan on a bar napkin or someone who's really gearing up to scale, um, you know, happy to help wherever I can. If, if that turns into a working relationship, fantastic. If not, also fine. Um, just anytime I can be a resource, you know, out here in Denver, Colorado, we're a very pay it forward uh, mentality in the startup space. And I think that permeates everywhere from your investors to your entrepreneurs to your attorneys. Um, and that's how we like to operate and happy to kind of show that mode of operation to anyone who's interested. Love that. One more final question. Um, can you work throughout the U.S. or do you only work in Colorado? So I'm only licensed in Colorado. So there needs to be some kind of nexus to Colorado. Um, so whether you're located here, or the business is located here or doing contracts here, there needs to be some kind of tether to Colorado for it to be appropriate for me to, to represent or to participate in a transaction. But even if you're not related to Colorado, you know, I've got a lot of buddies from law school or different you know areas of my life that are practicing in different states. And um, I can probably provide a referral or if I can't, I can at least kind of point you in the right direction and get you a little closer to where you're going. Awesome. And if you're on an online business, then you're probably doing business in Colorado, right? You're so probably in every state. Yeah, you're probably in every state. So you want to be careful on that one too. Holy cow. There's like, there's, there's big cans of worms that can be opened up if you just don't know. So reach mm -hmm. out, reach out to Josh, ask some questions and you know, it sounds like you're going to be a fantastic guide to, to help them strengthen their position. So awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah. All right, listeners, I hope you found a couple ideas to put into your business that will help you be more profitable, take less risk, avoid any big, hairy, audacious problems that would come up in the future because you didn't know. So I think it's important, and I hope you found a couple ideas here. While you're at it, um, hey, would you like to increase your net profitability by 45% in just 30 days? Don't think it's possible? It is check out my new training called the 30 day profit booster. This quick and easy profit boosting strategy can be done without spending additional money on marketing, hiring more staff or working longer hours. Get more information at 30 day profit booster.com. And then, Hey, hit us up while you're at it. Give us your questions. Tell us something that's going on. Maybe you just have a question or concern you wanted to find out if it's viable enough that you should reach out to an attorney. Get us in the comments, let us know, tell us what it is, and Josh and I will respond back in the comments and get you in the safe place that you need to be in. And while you're at it, please subscribe. Uh, you can always catch Profit with a Plan on any of your favorite podcast players, and we're looking forward to more great profitable information on next week's show. So until then, make your plans and profit with them. Thanks so much, Josh. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.